The Diary of Dr. X, Episode 11, The Blessings of St. Augustine. Dr. X? Someone asked. Gravel scuttled as someone rushed up behind me. I was on my rounds, picking up beer cans and cigarette butts. I walked up the back alley to the east of Osborne Street. I turned to my left. Jody, nice to see you. Beautiful day, isn't it? It was midsummer and warm. I'd only met him two days before, properly at least. The day before that, he and a friend had greeted me by name in the alley between River and Rosalind Road, though I hadn't known them. That had mystified me for a little while, anyway. They told me they thought my attire was way cool, as I reminded them of Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> what with my round black shades, the long hair, and the trench coat I was wearing which I had found in the dark park a few months previously. An earlier generation probably would have said John Lennon, but there you go. And then the following day, I met him again, behind the fire station where you can pass through on the way to the, zoo, the zoo's beer vendor. He and some of his young friends were drinking there, as people do. So I often pass through there to seek beer cans when I'm scavenging as a result. It was then he told me he was Zuki's nephew. Zuki is one of the leaders of the street people in the Osborne village. He's lived in the streets of the area for over 10 years. Gotta respect that. So Jody had heard of me through him. Jody referred to me as the elder I was telling you about when he introduced me to his other young friends. His older sister gave me a hug and asked me to help watch out for them. It was nice to know that they thought so highly of me, since being an elder implied far more than age to their people. It implied wisdom and the respect that accompanies it in Native American traditions. Funny how I often seem to get more props in the street due to my academic credentials than I do in the ivory towers in recent years. There you go. Would you like something to eat? Jody asked. Sure. Jody handed me a chocolate and nut-covered biscuit wrapped in plastic foil. It's a gesture of respect in Native societies to provide food to elders. Thanks, I said. We continued up the alley as I munched on the snack he brought me. Then the front street, as we were going in the same direction, at least for a time. He knew I was a scavenger, but he still respected me. We talked about my work, in fact, as we continued to walk about. The ones I like, I said, are the ones who drop an unlit cigarette and are too squeamish to pick it up again off the pavement and smoke it. I get so many unlit smokes from those people. We both laughed and shared our knowledge of the best places to pick up cigarette butts. Finally, before our paths diverged, I asked him where he had gotten the snack he had given me. From St. Augustine, he said. And no, it wouldn't be the man. He's long dead. Though I have read his philosophy and quoted him in my philosophy books. No, that would be the village church, Augustine United, which I had passed just before Jody ran up behind me. That's, I guess, where he was coming from. I usually use the food bank, I said. They give out food Monday through Thursday, 1.30 till 3.30. Cool, I'll have to remember that, I replied. And that is how I learned of the Oak Table Hospitalities Ministry. I began attending it regularly to help stretch my food bank provisions. What I found was a substantial meal Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday with a lighter snack on Wednesday, which is craft day. Coffee is always free, though, and bottomless, and there's no preaching like you get in some soup kitchens. Meals consisted mainly of sandwiches, tuna, salmon, egg, poultry, usually a selection with a fruit drink such as apple or cranberry, maybe iced tea, and a dessert of some kind. Sometimes there were also fruits such as bananas or apples available, and even a bag of bread to take home with you, donated by the local supermarket. As fall came on and the weather got colder, hot meals and savory soups became more common. I've had curried chickpeas on a bed of rice, KD with a hot dog and ketchup, spaghetti with tomato sauce, and meat and a side of coleslaw, and even pierogies with onions and bacon. 
more commonly you get soup, sandwich, and a dessert muffin or a piece of cake or something like that. It's an inviting place, frequented by the street people as well as others with low income, including the elderly. There is a telephone available if you need one to call a food bank, for example, as well as free internet access on a single computer, which you can sign up for in 15 minute intervals. They also give out free clothing periodically if you are in need and post a list of all of the other churches and institutions who provide free meals or assistance on their bulletin board. Even my mother, who is a lay minister in the United Church, knows of the good works of St. Augustine. So if you are a street person, a transient, or simply low income, and are in the Osborne Village area here in Winnipeg, you should keep it in mind as a supplement to your diet. And yes, my episodes usually end with some type of cynical comment or other, but it's pretty difficult to diss true Christian charity when you see it in operation and benefit from it on a regular basis. So God bless St. Augustine and the Oak Table Ministry and everyone involved. Cheers.